This is a technical introduction to the course of 20 free maths tutorials. You, you, you don't need to watch this. Depends. If you've got a, quite an academic learning style, I'd listen to this. If you're a teacher and you're using my materials to support your students, definitely watch this. I would say definitely. Well, again, it depends. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to crack on. Um, what topics are covered? This is based on my personal experience of teaching, well, hundreds of people maths on a kind of one-to-one -one basis. The idea is I'm picking out key core skills which I see most often done badly and which I see most often have the highest impact on maths skills in general. So I'm covering basic sums which is amazing how many people get those wrong. And then so I see the skill of doing the same to both sides, where you have something like 5 plus 2 equals 7. Oh, look, well, that, what does that equal sign mean? It means that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And that a core a fundamental basis of maths is that you can do the same to both sides of an equal sign. And I find that if this is really deeply understood by a student, suddenly the rest of maths is a lot easier. Indices, obviously, this is just a... There's nothing magic about indices, it's just a way that humans have found to describe larger numbers, but we need to know what it means and we need to be able to manipulate them. Linear solve, ugh, yeah, not the biggest fan of this anyway, but we need to know it. And it has kind of core skills built into it, like same to both sides. It's kind of a way of teaching same to both sides in my opinion. I, I wish it wasn't called linear solve anyway. I don't get to decide what the topics in maths are called. Um, graphs. I'm covering the basics of graphs, which is how do you even plot a point? And crucially, what does y equals x plus 1 mean? Does it mean a line on a graph? Does it mean a relationship between two variables? Does it mean an equation that cannot be solved and therefore has an infinite number of solutions? I think that if you can understand more deeply what a graph is, then you're in a better position. Quadratic solve. To me, quadratic solve, the solving of a quadratic equation is basically based on a trick and mathematicians at advanced levels use the occasional trick. It's just a thing. It's like, oh, well, we've designed all these equations. We can use tricks to make stuff happen in maths. Solving quadratic equations is one of those situations. By inspection solve, to me, this is a very, very important core skill. How many times have, have teachers said to students, you're not allowed to guess? And then the student says, but wait a sec, earlier on you guessed. It's like, no, I didn't really guess. This is a clear explanation of saying what is a guess and what isn't a guess. You are not allowed to guess in maths. Well, it depends. You kind of can, can't you? Because we're modern um, iterative techniques. But anyway, ignoring that, just analytical maths like this. If you can solve things by inspection, you say potentially save a lot of time. You open up a lot of very complex um, problems. And I have found that by teaching by inspection, my students are then able to do more advanced uh, question types without even knowing the standard approach because because they're so open to the idea of doing by inspection. Let's keep on with this. I don't want to spend hours on this introductory video, but hopefully this is interesting. Fractions, yeah, well, fractions are obviously really important. Uh, they're a way of representing a number on the number on the number line. Simultaneous equations. Uh, by the way, just as a reminder, yep. So this three plus means that from lesson three onwards, we're going to be covering simultaneous equations. To me, simultaneous equations are very, very important. They're core to the idea of how you solve problems in maths because you turn the logic behind the problem into a number of equations which you can then solve simultaneously. Um, and anyway, I mean, my experience is that once you hit something like A-level, which is a name for an exam type in Britain, um, then simultaneous equations are just, like, just so, so important to things like mechanics and statistics. Thirds. Thirds are thirds. We gotta learn them. I d I don't I don't know how I feel about thirds. I must be honest. Having done a lot of higher level maths. I'd love to hear in the comments if you've got an opinion on this, but mm, I'm not sure how useful they are. But I can see that you need to understand them. If which I realise is a massive contradiction. Anyway, we'll be covering those. Um make it look the same, solve. This is, I have a number of different, if you read my ebook, which by the way is free, also available as a paperback book, but you'd have to pay for that. Um, I go into a few different approaches to solving equations. 
Um, and I've only picked out, you'll notice I've only picked out two special ones here in this series of 23 maths lessons, which is by inspection and make it look the same. I think maybe they're the both the two most important the, um, special skills that I teach to my kind of basic skills students. And I think that make it look the same is very mixed in with by inspection because suppose you look at an equation and you go, well, I can't solve that straight away. And you say, oh, well, it's a quadratic. Oh, it's a quadratic. I'll just do quadratic solve. And then you say, no, it's not that either. I don't know what to do. And it's like, well, then make it look the same because then you might find a route to solving it. So it's it's basically a way of saying, here's a generic thing you can do with any equation to start messing around with it to start finding the solution. Anyway, that's why it's in here. Uh, functions. I think functions are very important. I cover them from lesson 9 onwards in this series of 20 lessons. Um, you'll see I use quite a novel approach, which uh, hopefully you will find useful. And the idea of simplifying, we're already going to have been simplifying before lesson 9, but we're doing it kind of overtly as an actual thing on its own. So, um, yeah. Notice there doesn't appear to be anything new from lesson 10 onwards. That's because all we're doing is building on the topics we've introduced up to lesson 9, which I did on purpose with this series of 20 lessons, because I spent quite a long time designing this. Um, teaching techniques. I just want to briefly mention this. When I am teaching, I use many different teaching techniques. However, this is a video series, so I'm not using spot the mistake, I'm not using what's missing, and I'm not using true or false. By the way, I'm a very big fan of true or false as a teaching technique, but I don't think the three I just crossed out work very well for non-interactive videos. I say non-interactive, I mean that you don't have like choices to make, you have to follow the questions in a certain order. And uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's why I'm using unusual questions and spaced repetitions as the primary ways of teaching within this set of 23 lessons. Anyway, um, topics not included. What topics are not included? Uh, logs, quadratics and minus signs, geometry, some graphs, probability and statistics, calculus. I'm just going to pause there for a moment. By the way, all of these are included in my free maths book. Oh, he's plugging his maths book. <laughs> it's free. So, so, you know, go and check it out if you want. Um, and the finally, something which I'm a big fan of, is I have a five, what I call a five-step approach to solving any equation. It, I reluctantly didn't include it in this series of 20 lessons because to me, the five-step approach in solving the equation is something that you, I tend to introduce to my students once I can see they're getting on top of the basics. And this set of 20 is basically just a... 20 lessons is basically a primer in the basics of um, of maths, the foundational skills which can then be built on. Uh, something very, very, oh yeah, right. well I've already talked about this in the early introduction. Um, oh, have I? I can't remember. Anyway, this will get mentioned in every video. Um, some questions are not possible. I'm not aware of many teachers that do this. Which might just be because I hadn't seen many teachers doing it by chance. Anyway, I'm a big fan of this. Some of my questions are simply not possible. I find this disincentivized. This this is a way of discouraging guessing. Um, and I encourage all teachers to do this. Because sometimes a student needs to be able to go, mm, yeah, no, I can't see anything to do with this. Um, I think it's important to recognize when you can and when you can't do things. I do this for two reasons. One is I just think it's a better way of building the basics because it's a, if you're constantly giving things to which there are a solution, it means that students can use loads of really crafty shortcuts in their mind without truly learning a subject. But if you're giving, anyway, this is a deep, this is, I'm not going to go on about this now. I encourage you to do it um, and I use it in this series of 20 uh, videos. I don't know. I encourage all the time that during these lessons and whenever I'm teaching, that if you don't know, you just say don't know. It's not an exam. By the way, when I'm actually teaching, I will sometimes say to the student, very good. As a practice for the exam, try and guess. See how many points you can squeeze out of this question and I'll, I'll, I'll then talk you through what you did afterwards. 
Um, but my point is, if it's not the exam, then let's just it's a it's a learning opportunity. Um, and so say don't know and be open to learning what you should do. And that way, it's one of these things where um, there's this principle in learning where if you keep repeating something wrongly, you're giving your brain a muscle memory to do the wrong thing. So if you just say, I don't know, then you're not training bad muscle memory and you you then see the answer and then that you absorb the correct muscle memory. Uh, final thought, I'm going to do this, I'm going to circle this in red because it's so important. Um, I mentioned it in the other shorter introduction. Please only do one lesson a day. I use spaced repetition, which means that something will crop up in lesson one. And then I'll bring it back up again, say in lesson four. It depends. And the idea is that might be like a couple of weeks later. Ish. Depends. Or four days later, whatever. And the idea is it's testing whether you can remember it. And it'll be a slight variant, probably. It won't be exactly the same thing. Very occasionally, it's exactly the same question. Um, and that's been carefully designed into the course. And if you just smash through all the lessons in one day, it, 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 it literally doesn't work. And in fact, if you did that, you would, I think you would get a very poor idea of how good the course is. You'd probably think, well, this isn't very good. No, because it wasn't designed to be done in a day. Uh, yeah. Okay, so... Good luck, um, and thanks for watching this detailed introduction. If, if you did, you're probably like me and quite an academic learner. Good luck.